how to make the Goldilocks bag with Amber Makes Sewing School. It's the perfect bag. It's not too big and not too small and comes with a fabric case to keep your phone or glasses in too. It's available in two beautiful prints. Follow me and I'll show you how. Cutting out. Take the fabric panel that comes with your kit and give it a press. You can see all the pieces are printed on here. The seam allowances are included and each piece is labelled. So cut around the edge of each piece and pin the relevant label to the top edge of each piece. You can see here's all the outer pieces and the lining pieces, as well as all the zip panel pieces and the two pockets, the strap and the pieces for the fabric case. And some extra prints to use for your own makes. If you want to put wadding on your bag, then cut around roughly outside the outer, the bag front out and the bag back outer, because it's easy to quilt. But with all the other pieces, cut around the outer edge, the seam allowances are included, and you can see here I've pinned the label to them. So there's the two bag lining pieces. Here's all the pieces for the zip panel outer and the zip panel lining. This is the bag strap. And the zip tab you've got the pocket pieces and then the two pieces for the fabric case you've got an outer and a lining piece as well you'll also need some wadding the measurements for this are listed in the instructions as well as a zip again the measurements are in the instructions a piece of elastic for the fabric case and a matching button Preparing the pieces. If you're going to add wadding to your bag, to start with, cut a 19 by 5 inch piece of wadding to use for the case and put that to one side. Then from the remainder of the wadding, place the bag front outer and the bag back outer on top of the wadding. And if you're using fusible, press it into place. And if you're using non-fusible, then tack it into place all the way around. You can then quilt it. I've just quilted around and along the printed lines on the pattern, but you can use your own pattern if you prefer and then cut round the outer edge of it so that the wadding is level with the fabric edges. So that's the bag front outer and the bag back outer quilted and you're now ready to make your bag using your wadded and quilted pieces. Making the pocket. Take the pocket outer and the pocket lining, you can remove the labels and place them right sides facing. Make sure that the top edges are matching the top edges and all the raw edges match all the way round and then pin them together. Pin together at the corners first, and just make sure that they match nicely, and then you can pin them together down the sides, and then down the other side. Again, match up the corners so that you make sure that they match exactly. And then in the bottom corner. Now you need to leave a turning gap in the centre of the bottom edge. So if you measure and mark the centre of this. Then mark one inch either side of the turning of that centre mark. That marks a two inch gap in the centre. Now stitch together all round, starting at one side of the turning gap, and working all the way round and finishing at the other side. Then press the seams over to one side, and with the turning gap, press the seam allowance over both sides. Now to reduce bulk in the corners, if you trim off the corner and then cut a little bit from either side to grade the seams, this means that the corners will be less bulky and you'll get, get nice right angles when you turn it right sides out. Otherwise, it will be slightly bulky and have little rounded corners. So do take the time to just trim off these corners, but make sure you don't cut into the seam at all, that you're only cutting the fabric. Just cut as close as you can. Once that's done, you can turn the pocket right sides out through the turning gap. So put your fingers inside, push out one of the corners and turn the whole pocket right sides out. Now just push out the corners with your fingers to start with. And then to get nice pointy crisp corners, use something like I'm using the wooden stick for my turning tool, something that's a little bit pointed but not sharp, making sure that you don't pierce the stitching or the fabric. So just do this gently. Once you've pushed out all four corners, give it a press, make sure the turning gap edges are still turned under. Give it a press and then top stitch across the top edge just to hold the lining inside and then it will look like this. 
Now fold the pocket in half because you need to find the centre of the top edge and mark that with a pin. I'm just going to put the pin on the pocket outer side. Then take the bag front lining and fold it in half like this because you need to find the centre. This is for positioning the pocket correctly. So just make sure the raw edges match up and that you're folding it in half lengthways and marking that centre crease. You can just do that with your finger. It's just a, a position increase. Now measure two inches down from the top of the crease. So that's at the top of the curved edge of the pocket line of the bag front lining and just make a little mark two inches down. This is where the top of the pocket's going to go. I'm just going to mark the bottom of the centre so that I can make sure the pocket's straight. So line up the top edge with that two inch mark and make sure the crease on the pocket and the crease on the front lining match up. Then you can be sure that your pocket is central and also straight. By matching up the bottom crease, then you know that it's running straight and then pin it into place all the way around. Now sew the pocket into place down the side, across the bottom and up the other side. And that's it finished. Your pocket is now attached to the front lining and you're ready for the next stage. Sewing the darts. Take the bag front outer and fold one of the dart sections, those, those cut out sections at the bottom, so that the raw edges of the cut out section are facing and it's right sides together. Then pin together at the top and then a little bit further down to pin the whole dart. Now sew it together, working from the top all the way down in a straight line and reverse stitch to finish. Once that's done, the dart will look like this. Then repeat that to sew the dart in the other cutout section. Now press these darts so they're facing towards the side edges. So put your iron into the point of the dart. You'll need to hold the bag front out a little bit up this time, just so it's nice and flat. And make sure that you press the seams so they're facing towards the side edges. It's worth pressing this nicely so that the dart has a nice point on the edge without any bulk. And that's the darts finish, which is what gives you that nice little curved edge and a bit of shape to your bag. Now take the bag back outer and sew the darts in exactly the same way, but this time press them towards the centre. We're going to press the front darts and the back darts in opposite directions so they nest when you join it together. Take the bag front lining, sew the darts and press the seams towards the side edges. Then take the bag back lining, again sew the darts in exactly the same way and this time press the seams towards the centre. And that's the darts finished to give your bag some shape. Assembling the bag outer and the bag lining. Place the bag front outer and the bag back outer right sides facing. And then matching the raw edges pin together all the way round. Pin together down the side, that top straight edge we're not going to stitch. So just pin together down the side at the top, but leaving that top open. Then pin together at the darts. Because you press them in opposite directions, as you can see here, the seam allowances, then they will nest together nightly, nicely because it's important that those match those seams up and then you'll get a nice neat finish on the outside of your bag. Once you've pinned the dart together, then pin together around the curved edge from the dart up to the top. Make sure that you match up the raw edges as you're doing this. Then pin together at the other dart. Again, the seam allowance are pressed in opposite directions. So just make sure that they nest or roll it back to make sure the seam is sitting exactly on top of each other. Now you can pin together between the two darts along the bottom edge of the bag outer pieces. You could also put a pin vertically through the dart seam on one dart and into another just to make sure you will get a nicer finish if you make sure that those dart seams match up. Now pin together at the top edge so match up those top straight edges and pin and then pin all the way down this side to the other dart. If you do put your placement pins in places like the top edges and the seams or darts first, then it's much easier to get everything matching up rather than pinning it all round in one go. Always use placement pins in places that need to match up. Now sew together starting at the top edge but not across the straight edge or the curved edge, but just down the side, all the way around the bottom, 
and up to the other side. And then it will look like this. You can see it's all sewn together. I've also pressed the seam open and flat all the way down. As far as I can go, it's more important that the top edge is open flat for later on. Then turn the bag out to right sides out. Push out all of those seams so they lay right on the edges. If you take the time to do this now and making sure the seams lay on the edges, it's easier later. You can see my dart seams match up nicely which gives the curved shape. Now roll the seam between your fingers and press it so that all the seams lay right on the edges. As I said, it's easier to do that now before the bag is lined. Now take the bag front lining and the bag back lining and we're going to sew these together in exactly the same way. So place them right sides facing, pin together at the top edge, matching up the top straight edge but just pinning on the side, then pin together at the darts. Again, you press the seams in opposite directions so they will nest together nicely. So make sure that those dart seams match up and then pin together down the side between that top edge and the dart that you've just pinned. All of these raw edges will match up nicely because the two fabric pieces are exactly the same size. But just adjust it slightly to make sure that you've always got raw edges matching. Now pin the other dart together Again, the seams are pressed in opposite directions, so you can nest them, which means pushing one seam across another until they just stop, because the extra seam allowance will help them to stop. Pin together at the top edge, matching those straight edges as before. And then pin together down the side, up to where you put the other dart is pinned together. Put as many pins in as you need to make sure that the raw edges stay matching. Now we need to leave a turning gap in this bottom edge for turning the bag out. So if you just measure the halfway point across the bottom edge, if you just measure from one dart to the other, and then whatever half of that measurement is, put a little mark in the centre of the bottom of the bag. Now measure three inches either side of this centre mark and that leaves a six inch gap. And that's enough for turning the bag right sides out. So pin together at that one mark that you've made and then pin at the other one, matching up the raw edges. And although you're going to leave this turning gap unstitched, I always pop a pin in between because it helps to keep everything nice and flat while you're sewing. Now sew together down the side Leave that top straight edge and curved edge open as before. Stop stitching at one turning gap and reverse stitch. Start stitching at the other turning gap, reverse stitching and up to the end, leaving the top straight edge open. And then it will look like this. And as you can see, I've pressed these seams open just to make them nice and flat for when I'm assembling the bag. And then I've pressed the edges of the turning gap over by a quarter of an inch, which is the same with the seam allowance. So if you press them over to the wrong side like this, it just helps when sewing them together later. And now that's the lining finished. Making the strap. Take the strap piece, remove the label and fold it in half with right sides facing and give it a press, just it helps to sew it together if you've pressed it. Then matching up the raw long edges, pin it together at one end and then pin it together at the end, the end, making sure that the short edges meet up and then pin between. Make sure that the raw edges match, but if you've pressed it in half, this does make it a little bit easier. And then just pin it together all the way down the length and then sew together all the way down the long edge. Now press this seam open and flat, like you can see I've done here, and I've also tacked across the edge because I'm going to use my turning tube to turn it right sides out. So if you push the tube inside, because you've tacked across the edge, you can then use the stick to push it right sides out. If you don't have a turning tube, then just carefully turn the whole strap right sides out. When it comes out the other end, you can just and snip the tacking stitches. Use the longest stitch on your machine for working the tacking stitches and then it's easier to take them out or you can tack it by hand but that's just to help you turn it right sides out. Obviously if you're not turning a tube using a turning tube you don't need the tacking stitches. Remove the stick. Now press the strap 
so that the seam that you've just stitched lays down the centre of the back edge. The print has been designed on the handle so that you can press it down the centre of the edge and it just means that you'll have a nice print on the right side. So give it a good press and you can see then you get the nice print on the right side making sure that that seam is running down the centre of the back edge. Once you've pressed it all the way along, then top stitch down both long edges. This just holds the strap together and also decorates it. And there's your strap finished. All nice and pressed with a nice print on the front and the back. And you're ready to move on to the next stage. Making the zip panel upper section. The zip panel is optional. You can leave this out if you prefer, but if you want to add the zip panel, then follow these instructions. Take one zip panel outer and fold the short edges over by a quarter of an inch to the wrong side and press. Then repeat that with the other zip panel outer and then the two zip panel lining pieces so that all of them have the short edges turned over and pressed by a quarter of an inch to the wrong side. Now take your zip panel outer and place it right sides up. Measure and mark a quarter of an inch inwards from the left hand side. Now take your zip and place it right sides down on top. Undo the zip slider all the way to the end and then take the end of the zip tape where the metal end is and fold it upwards into a triangle so it's overlapping. And then pin that into place so it's upward, folded upwards and it's right sides down. I'll that little metal end of the zip needs to be on that quarter of an inch mark and the top of the zip tape needs to match up with the raw edge of the zip panel outer and pin that into place. Then pin the rest of the zip tape in place all the way along making sure that the edge of the zip tape matches up with the raw top edge of that zip panel outer. And pin it in place all the way to the end. Make sure that turned under edge of the zip panel outer stays turned under by pushing a pin in. You can see I've just checked. Now at this end, you, where you've used the pin to, to place it, the zip tape upwards, just replace that so it's pinned in and make sure the edge is in. And then tack along the top within the seam allowance. So you can see here just an eighth of an inch for the end and the two short edges are still turned under of the zip panel outer. Now take the zip panel lining and place that right sides down on top. Match up those turned under edges and then make sure the raw edge of the zip panel outer and lining match up and the zip is sandwiched between. And then place a pin just to hold those turned under edges together and to also make sure they match up because they need to match up exactly so the turned over edges meet. Then at the other side, pin the short edges that are turned under together, making sure the turned under edges meet by putting a pin just a little bit further down. And then you can put a pin at the top. It's important that the raw edges of the zip panel outer and the zip panel lining match up. So pin it into place all the way along, just adjusting it to make sure that those raw edges are matching up. The tacking stitches that you put to attach the zip the first time really helps with this because nothing shifts. Now using the zip foot on your machine, you need to sew these three layers together all the way along the top edge, making sure that the turned under edges stay turned under. So stitch it together all the way along the edge from one end to the other, and then it will look like this. So now you've sewn the zip panel outer and the lining and the zip together. Now open up that seam and refold it so it's wrong sides facing. You can just tuck the end of that zip inwards because you don't want that sticking out. It needs to be within. So match up the turned under edges on the side and pin together and then do that on the other side. The end of the zip will extend beyond, which is what you want because the idea of this recessed zip panel is that it makes the bag open fully. So you need to have the zip longer than needs be. So that's Fine, don't cut it. We will sort that out later, but don't cut the zip. Now press it so that that seam is laying right on the edge. Take time here to make sure that the seam lays on the edge on the lining side as well as the outer side. And then the raw edges at the bottom need to match up. So pop a pin in to hold these together. 
Now top stitch along the side, across the top and down the other side and then just tack together along the bottom within the seam allowance. And it will look like this. So the zip is enclosed between the zip panel outer and the zip panel lining. Those folded under short edges match up exactly and I've tacked together at the bottom edge. Making the zip panel lower section. This is to complete the zip panel. Now this time take the zip panel lining and place it right sides up and measure a quarter of an inch in from the turned under edge. The lower section is made in exactly the same way as the upper section, you're just reversing the pieces. So you've got the lining right sides up. Now take the end of the zip and, this and place it right sides up this time and fold the end of that zip tape underneath this time. So you can see here the tape is underneath the rest of the tape and pin that into place just to hold it. Now place it right sides up, matching those raw, those turned under edges on the side and making sure the raw top edges match. So it's important that they match up. The end of the zip tape will match that quarter of an inch mark. At the other end, match up those turned under side edges and then match up the raw edge at the top of the, the zip panel lining with the edge of the zip tape and pin it into place but just double checking that those turned under edges meet at the same time. Then once you've pinned it together at each end, you can then pin it together between. But it's important that the turned under edges on the upper section and the lower section are meeting up. You'll just get a neater finish that way. And then pin it together along the top edge, matching the zip tape with the raw edge of that zip panel lining. I need to fold that back underneath again, the pin came undone. So just pin it into place again, it's very important that that's underneath and that the side edge stays turned under, so just pin that all into place. Now you can tack it into place all the way along within the seam allowance, so about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Once that's done it will look like this, so now the zip is tacked in and you can see that edge is folded underneath. Now take the last zip panel outer and place it right sides down on top. Again, match up those turned under side edges. I'm keeping the zip closed at this point. It's easier for matching up if the zip is closed. Because then you can be sure that the side edges all match up once with the zip closed. Once you've pinned both ends into place, you can then pin across the top, matching up the raw edges with the edge of the zip tape. Now sew the three layers together using the zip foot on your machine. You can open the zip to do this if you like. I opened it, I find it a bit easier. It's just the pinning that you need to do with the zip closed. Now in the same way as you did with the upper section, place it wrong sides facing, so open out the seam and refold and pin it together down the sides. If the end of the zip sticks out from this seam, then just poke it back in because it's important that that turned underneath end stays inside. So match up those turned under side edges and pin them together. Then matching up the raw bottom edges of the zip panel outer and zip panel lining, pin them together. This is exactly the same way as you did with the upper section. Now take the time here to press it. It's important that the seam that you've just stitched when you were joining the zip into place lies right on the edge. So put it on your ironing board. I'm just doing it with my fingers here, but use your iron to press that seam so it lays right along the edge and press it from the outer side as well as the lining side. You can see I'm having to pull it down here. But once you've pressed it, you'll then be able to stitch it more neatly. And when you've done that, top stitch along one side, across the top, down the other side and tack along the bottom raw edges. And then it will look like this. And you've got the upper section and the lower section attached either side of the zip and your zip panel is now finished. And it's really neat on the outside as well as the inside. Adding the zip tab. Close the zip fully and then measure two inches from the right hand side along the edge of the zip tape so that the zip tape 
is measured two inches to the right of that side. Make a mark and making sure the zip is completely closed, then cut off the end of the zip at that mark. So then the zip is now extending two inches beyond the right hand side of your zip panel. Now take your zip tab and fold the top long edge over by a quarter of an inch to the wrong side and give it a press. You can remove the label now. Fold the zip tab in half, making sure those that folded over edge stays folded over and pin it together down this short side. Now sew together, making sure you sew over those turned under edges to hold them in place. And then it will look like this. Now to make sure that you fold it in half, if you just put a pin on the opposite side to the seam, then make sure the seam matches up with that pin and then it's folded exactly in half. And then pin it together across the last short raw edge and stitch together along this edge. Once that's done, just snip off the corners, making sure that you don't cut the stitching. And then I like to snip off a little bit, not all, all the way up to the seam, but just a little bit to reduce the bulk there. Now turn the zip tab right sides out by just poking your fingers inside. And then to make sure it has nice corners, just push out the corners using something that's pointed but not sharp because you don't want to split the fabric or the stitching. So just point, push that out so you've got nice neat corners. And then give it a press to make sure it's nice and flat and make sure those raw, those edges are turned under. Now with the zip panel right sides up, pop the end of the zip into the zip tab so it's right sides up. Give it a little tap to make sure that the end of the zip tape is right at the top of the pocket and then pin this little pocket because the zip tab has now become like a little pocket to enclose the end, enclose the end of the zip. Just pin that into place and then top stitch all the way around in a square to hold the zip tab to the zip and it will look like this. Your zip panel is now finished and the end of the zip is neatly encased by its little pocket. Attaching the strap. Place one, under the, one end of the strap right sides facing across the top of the side seams on one side of the bag. It's important that the strap is placed half an inch above the raw edge. This just keeps extra secure and stops it being pulled out once you're carrying it with all the weight inside the bag. Now make sure the strap is centrally placed across those side seams. You can measure this if you like or just judge it by eye. And then with half an inch sticking out above the top, pin it into place. You can see I'm pushing a pin through the centre seam of the strap at the back and then through this seam on the side seams to make sure it's central. And then pin it into place just a little bit further down. Now tack it into place across the top and then a little bit further down. This will just hold it straight during assembly and then it will look like this. You can see a half an inch is poking across the top. Now loop the strap around the bottom of the bag, making sure it stays straight and pin the other end to the other side seam. Again, make sure it's sticking a half an inch above the top. You can measure this and make a little mark. I find it easy if you put the half inch mark on that. Make sure the strap is right sides facing with that side seam. And again, make sure it's central you can put a pin through the centre seam and into the side seam of the bag to be sure of this. And then place a pin at the top and making sure the strap is laying straight. Again, you can centre it on that seam to be sure. Just pin it a little bit further down and then tack it together across the top and then further down. The second set of tacking stitches will be removed later. And now you can see the strap is attached. It's laying straight and it loops downwards around the bag and that's the strap fully attached to the bag ready for your next stage. Attaching the zip panel. Fold the zip panel in half widthways to find and mark the centre of the raw edges. You need to do this on the zip panel outers on the upper section as well as the lower section. This is just to find the centre.
you can use a pin or a mark for this and you can remove the labels now because you won't need these anymore. Now once that's marked, take the bag front outer and fold it in half because you need to find the centre of that curved section. So if you match up those top corners and then just place it wrong size facing like this, just pop a pin in the centre and that will mark the centre of the front edge. Now take your tape measure and you now need to measure and mark three quarters of an inch down from the top point. So where the curved edge meets the straight edge at the top, three quarters of an inch down, as you can see here. And again from the other side, three quarters of an inch down from there. This is where you're going to put the outer edge of the zip panel. It just marks it so that you can make sure it's even. So three quarters of an inch down from there. So you can see I've put those marks. Do exactly the same on the bag back out. So I put the centre mark and the three quarters of an inch marks. If you do that all now, it's a lot easier later. Now take your zip panel and place it right sides facing on top of the bag front outer. Match up those centre pins and pin together and then match up the three quarter of an inch pin to the left hand corner of the zip panel and pin it into place. And then match up the other end, so the right hand edge to the other side. You also need to pin it into place between the three quarter inch marks and the center. So you can either mark, match up either end and pin it into place between. Now this zip panel will fit here. You might need to ease it a little bit because you're pinning a straight edge to a curved edge. But I found it's only a short distance. If you ease it, it's fine. Now match up the other side. You can do this now or you could have done it at the beginning. But match up the other end of the zip panel to that three quarters of an inch mark and pin it into place. By doing this, you can be sure that the zip panel is placed centrally and also that it starts and finishes at the same place on the bag. So that it starts and finishes both three quarters inch down from the top. It just gives it an easy, even finish. And because you're pinning a straight edge to a curved edge, if you haven't marked the position of the outer sides, it can sometimes end up in a slightly different place. So just ease it gently around the edge, putting in plenty of vertical pins, because when you're pinning a straight edge to a curved edge, the more pins you better you put in, the better. Just make sure the raw edges are matching. Now tack this into place within the seam allowance. Once it's done, it will look like that, and you've tacked one side of the zip panel to the back front outer. Now undo the zip all the way to the end. Now take the other zip panel outer and fold it round the end of the side and pin it into place at the three quarter inch mark you did earlier. So you can see here that the at the zip goes round the side seam. Just make sure it's straight. It's easy to get it twisted, so just double check it straight. Once you've pinned it at that three quarter inch mark, match up the center pins. That's why it's always best to do all the marking before you do this, because then all the pins are in place, and then match up the other pin mark that's three quarters of an inch for the top. Now you can pin between the marking pins. Again, because you're pinning a straight edge to a curved edge, you'll need to ease it gently. I find if I pull it from one pin to the other, it will just then lie more evenly and then I can pin between. So I like to pin it halfway between the two pins and then between those pins. That helps to just make it lie more evenly. So if you pull it gently from one side to the other, then it will pin more evenly. Put as many pins in as you need to make sure that the raw edges are matching up. Then you'll just get a neater finish. And then tack together all the way along from one end to the other end. And now your zip panel is tacked to the bag outer with the strap beneath. Assembling the bag. With the bag outer right sides out and the bag lining wrong sides out, 
Place the bag outer inside the bag lining. They need to be right sides facing. Because we're now going to stitch all these layers together to finish assembling the whole bag. So match up the side seams on the bag outer with the side seams on the bag lining and also all the edges as well because you've got the top edges, the seams and the curved edges. But start by doing the side seams. Make sure those side seams match up and also the top. Now the important thing here because you've got the strap and the zip panel attached to the bag outer, it's important that always faces inside and doesn't get caught facing upwards to the wrong bits in the seam. So as you're work pinning this in place, make sure you fold it down. Now pin together at the other side, so you're matching up the side seams. You can see that the bag end of the bag strap is sticking up above the end of the bag, which is how it should be. You don't want to trim that off at all. It needs to be sticking up because it gives extra security. And then pin it together at the other corner and the side seams will match up. Now you can pin together along the curved edges so make sure as you're doing this that you just push that zip panel downwards and pin together so that you're matching up all the raw edges all the way along. And also double check that the strap is staying facing downwards as well. You'll soon feel it while you're pinning and sewing because you'll be going through extra layers. But if you just push it downwards so that you're only pinning through. But because you've tacked the zip panel, it will help to keep everything in place. So that's one side pinned into place. Now turn it around and do exactly the same with the other side. Because the lining and the outer are the same size, they, these edges will match up nicely. But obviously you're pinning through quite a few layers, so just make sure it's nice and even. And again, tuck the zip panel downwards to make sure that none of the zip section is facing up at all. Now, once that's all pinned into place, you can sew it together all the way around the edge, around the curves, across the straight edge, around the curves, so it's sewn together all the way around. And once that's done, it will look like that. You can see it's all sewn nicely together, so the lining is attached to the outer. Now, to help this curve lay flatter, you may need to make little snips all the way along the curve. I've spaced mine about a quarter of an inch apart, and snip up to the seam, but not into it. So I would say about a couple of fabric threads away from the seam. If you do cut into the seam, don't worry, just pop it back under your machine and sew back over it. So what this will do is, because you've got lots of layers here with the outer and the lining and the zip panel, it will just help them to open out. So when you turn the whole thing right sides out, you'll just get a smoother curve that will lie flatter as well. So do take the time to do this and just make sure you don't cut into the seam. So there's the, about a quarter of an inch apart. You don't need to do the top edges at all. It's just this curved edge. It does make a difference to how the seam will lie later. So take the time to do this. I find if you use small sharp scissors, it works really well. And I tend to use the end of the scissors, the one nearest the screw, rather than the points of the scissors. You've got a little bit more control over this part of the scissors than the points. Now, once that's done, turn the whole bag right sides out through the turning gap in the lining. The turning gap is quite big, so it's easy to push out because you've got quite a lot of layers. Now, push your hands inside and push out all of the curves all around the bottom of the bag. Because you won't be able to do that once you've sewn this turning gap close, so make sure you've pushed them all out. Now, fold the edges of the turning gap to the inside. You did press these earlier, but they may have come unfolded with all the sewing. So just fold them inwards, give them a press if needs be, and then pin together, making sure those folded under edges match up. Then pin together all the way along. 
Now sew this turning gap closed. You can either top stitch by machine or slip stitch it by hand. It's entirely up to you. And once you've done that, it looks like this. So push the lining back inside the bag because that's all finished now. And again, push out all the corners and curves so it lies nice and flat inside there. Remove the second row of tacking stitches from the strap because this needs to face upwards. If you've worked nice long tacking stitches on your machine, it won't take long, but just make sure you remember to re remove these and pull out all the loose threads when you do it as well. Now with the strap facing upwards, fold the zip panel down into the inside and then roll that seam between your fingers and press it. Press it really well so that the seam lays exactly on the edge because we're going to top stitch this in a moment and if you've got the seam lying nicely on the edge, you'll get a much neater finish. Tuck the end of the zip inside and then press it all the way along rolling it between your fingers, giving it a little spray of water if needs be. Then top stitch all the way around the edge. Now I stitched a quarter of an inch in from the edge. That, because this helps the zip panel to lay inside the bag and it gives you a nicer finish than a narrower stitch. So about a quarter of an edge and you can see that the zip panel lies really nicely inside the bag. That quarter of an inch top stitch helps to finish it all off. And your bag is now finished. You've got your little slip pocket inside, the curved darted bottoms, the recessed zip panel, which will keep everything inside, and then the nice curved edge, which makes it an attractive shape and will sit nicely under your shoulder. So your Goldilocks bag, not too big, not too small, is finished. Making the matching case. Let's start by preparing the fabric. Place the case outer, right sides are on top of the wadding, Pin into place and then cut the wadding level with the raw fabric edges, but then take it off and trim a quarter of an inch off it all round. This just helps to keep the wadding out of the seams. Then, if you quilt it, I've just sewn through the wadding and the outer fabric, through some of the printed lines like this. It gives it a little bit more structure and definition as well. You can see the wadding is a quarter of an inch bigger and I've quilted along the lines and the case outer is prepared. Attaching the elastic loop. Take the case outer and fold it in half to mark the centre of the top curved edge. It's easy if you fold it, but you can measure it if you want. And just pop a pin to mark this centre of the top edge. Now take your piece of elastic and fold it in half to make a loop so that the two short ends meet up. And then place it on top of that centre mark, but so that the ends extend a quarter of an inch above the top of the case outer. This stops the elastic getting pulled out when you're using it. So make sure they extend a quarter of an inch above and they're placed centrally and pin them into place. It's a little bit fiddly with elastic, but just keep them straight. Then pin them into place a little bit further down, just near the bottom of the loop. Now tack into place across the top within the seam allowance and then tack across the bottom as well. For the bottom ones, use a longer stitch length on your machine because you'll be removing these later. And then you can see the elastic loop is all tacked in place and ready. Assembling the case. Place the case outer and the case lining right sides facing. You can remove the labels now. Make sure that you match all the raw edges. So the top curved edge needs to match the long straight side edges and the bottom straight edges. Once you're happy that they're all matching, pin them together all the way around. Start pinning at one end and then at the other and then pin between. This just helps you to get them to match up nicely. So pin together in the bottom corner. And then making sure the raw edges match up. Pin together across the bottom and then pin up the other side. Again, just rearrange the fabric, move the lining to make sure it's the raw edges are matching up nicely. And because you've tacked the bottom of the elastic loop into place, that will stay down so you don't have to worry about that folding upwards and getting caught in the seam. So it is worth taking the time to do those extra tacking stitches, even if you prefer to do it by hand. So once you've pinned it into place all the way around, we now need to mark a turning gap. So from the top curved edge, measure five inches down from the right hand side and mark this. And then measure three inches below this and that's your turning gap. And it's positioned in this specific place so that it will be on the underside of the case once it's made. It's the, le it's the most 
the least obvious place. You won't see it as much. So it's that's why the gap is there. Now start stitching on one side of the turning gap. Stitch all the way round, round the curved edge. And then stop stitching on the other side of the turning gap, leaving it unstitched. Once you've done that, it will look like this. You can see the elastic is poking up above it. And there's the turning gap that I've left unstitched. Now we're just going to do some trimming. So cut off the bottom corners, cut across the corner and a little bit of fabric either side. This helps the corners to lie out at right angles because it removes the fabric bulk. Now along the top curved edge, you need to remove some of the fabric bulk. So cut out little notches. These are small triangles that you cut out of curved edges. Make sure you don't cut into the seam allowance. And you can see I've spaced these about quarter to an eighth an inch of apart. Because you've got a few fabric layers in here, if you cut the notches out, then it does remove the fabric bulk and you'll get a neater curve. When you get to the elastic, do not trim it off. Leave that poking above the edge, so don't go near that when you're trimming. That's really important because with a narrow elastic like this, it can easily pull out if you have the ends of the elastic right up to the raw edges. So do leave those as they are and then just cut out those notches all the way along that curved edge. And that's removed quite a lot of bulk and you'll get a neater finish. Now there's with the turning gap, fold the edge of the turning gap over and give it a press so that it lays on the inside. And then do that all the way around the case, press it all the way around and then turn the other side of the turning gap over. Take the time now to give it all a press all the way around to press those seams open. I'm just going to turn mine right sides out, but really you should press it first. Now grab one of the seams, go through the turning gap, grab one of the corners and then put your hands in to grab the top of the curved edge. Pull that through the turning gap until you've turned the whole thing right sides out. Pull everything right sides out so that the seams are laying on the edge and the corners. Do this by hand first before we use a pointed tool. Now, use something that's pointed but not sharp. I'm using the wooden turning tool for my turning tool set. But there are lots of other point turners or chopsticks, but make sure it's not too sharp. Push out the corners and then push it in round the curved edge just to make sure the seams are laying on the edge. Now remove the tacking stitches from the end of the elastic loop. Be very careful when you're doing this that you don't cut through the elastic. So just very gently remove those tacking stitches because the elastic loop needs to be facing upwards at this stage. Now roll the seams between your fingers so that they lay right on the edge and give this a really good press. It's very important that the seams lay right on the edge for the next stage. Once you've pressed it, it will look like this. You can see there's a nice curved edge. All the seams are laying right on the edge. The turning gap is closed under. We'll be closing that later, but just leave it. And this stage is now finished. Creating the case flap. With the case lining right side up, measure and mark two inches down from the top curved edge all along the case lining. You can use a ruler for this or use a tape measure and measure. But if you draw a line, I'm using an erasable pen or you can mark it with pins. It just helps with placement. Now fold the bottom of the case upwards so the lining sides are facing and then the straight edge of the case fits, meets that drawn line. So by drawing it two inches down from the top, it's just easier than measuring. Now clip or pin it together down the edge. I'm clipping it because there's quite a few layers here, but you can pin it instead. When you reach the turning gap, just make sure it's still folded under. And you can see now why we positioned it where we did, because it's now on the back of the case and it won't be on the front. It just keeps it a little bit more hidden so it's not anywhere near the curved top. So make sure that those edges match up and pin or clip it together all the way from the top down to the bottom, down both sides. Now starting at the bottom, this right hand side, top stitch all the way along, all the way around the curve and down to the bottom on the other side. And it will look like this. I haven't stitched across the bottom, but this joins is the, the whole case together and also adds a bit of decoration to the top. Now fold the case flap over so it meets up with the bottom edge and pin it in place and that's the case flap created. Finishing off. 
I take your case and mark, I'm using an erasable pen here, where the bottom of the elastic loop lays on the case outer. You can use a pin or a pencil, but I've just found if you use a, a pen there, you can see it. Now you need to sew the button on in this place. So start by securing your thread. I've pushed the thread in a little bit further away and left a tail on the front and then work two or three stitches on top of each other just to secure the thread before you start stitching the button on. It's just easier. Now the button has to be sewn obviously just through the top layer, not all the way through, otherwise you won't be able to get anything in your case. So this is why I'm doing this carefully from the front. Take your button and sew it so it's exactly on that mark. You could put a little dab of fabric glue, like a, um, the sort of glue that you use for fabric placement or free PP. That helps to hold the button in place while you're sewing it on, especially because you've got to take care here that you keep going to the inside to sew the button on so that you don't go through all layers. So if you've got any fabric glue, then I find that really helps to hold it in place while you're sewing off to start with. Now sew it until it's securely in place. And then to finish it off, I always like to wrap the thread around a few times. This makes it more secure and also adds a small shank to the button, which just makes it stand off the fabric a little bit more. And then to secure the thread, just run it through the work a few stitches on top of each other and then push the needle through the outer fabric only and out a bit further away and that means you're not cutting the end near the button so it's more secure. So there's your button sewn on. All you have to do is loop the little piece of elastic around the button and that holds it and you've now got a matching fabric case. So you can put um, whatever you like in anything you want to keep safe. I found that I can get in mine a mobile phone, my glasses and my sunglasses. So it just helps to keep things safe in your bag so that you can find them more easily and also because it's padded, it protects them. So all that's left to do now is take your fabric case, pop it into your finished Goldilocks bag, zip it up so everything's nice and secure and your Goldilocks bag set is now finished and ready to show off 